and welcome to a new D3 tutorial. So this one is about how to model a scientific flask or a measuring flask. This is sponsored by Mr. Ridzwan Sakamat. And I'm guessing at that name he asks, how do you get that flask jar? Which he's referring to, let's go to one of the end models. This one. The one that has the uh, triangle sides. And uh, see if we can get another picture. So this is also the same concept on how to get this flask or the beaker or the test tubes. Or this is, I guess, considered a flask. I'm not really sure. So I looked up a flask on Google. See if you can show that. So... Uh, Here's some scientific measuring instruments. I went down to, uh, oh, I checked a bunch out, to flasks, and there it is. So I clicked on this picture, right-clicked, and save image. So once you have that saved in a location, I'm going to exit out this camera. Let's start a new window. File, new. So we have a uh, open plane in Cinema 40. We're going to open up to a multi-view window, go to front, expand that, options, configure here at the bottom. Now all the way on the right, you're going to upload this image, go to uh, downloads, and there it is. Okay, so now what you want to is drop in a loft nerve. That's about this button right here. Just hold, click and drag, oh, uh, you know, click, hold, and then drag over to here and let go. We also have to drop in a circle. Bam. So make the circle a child of the loft just by clicking it over here. You're going to see this little right angle. We're going to plane, and we're going to XZ. I'm going to drop this down so you can see it. So our circle is this way because it's two-dimensional opposed to straight at us or completely flat. Also, we're going to go back into our options configure and we're going to change the opacity down so you can barely see it. That is good enough. So I'm going to change this back to XZ axis so I can see where this plane is right here. I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to drop this at the bottom and just expand it so it's still touching this silhouette we're going to hit our move tool and we're going to hold control we're going to have that little uh, image click and drag up a little bit so now we have we just created another one let's scale that up it's going to touch right here i'm looking at you can model it from this side too I think the actual model is from this line right here. This is just the side. I'm going to click and drag. Expand that again. Oh. And then continue. Click and drag. And then click and drag. To around there where it becomes flat again. I'm going to use my uh, scale tool. Just shrink that down. And that's good enough. So I'm going to hit my move tool. I'm going to click and drag. So now if we go all the way up, the uh, the spline is starting to uh, warp right here. So we're going to create geometry in there. So I'm going to go up just a little bit and then click and drag again so it's straight up. You see that? One more time. If we just go like that, the spline wants to naturally like make it progressive. So, I'll make it progressive in the lower end, and then have it straight up. That should be efficient. I'm going to go up here, click and drag, bevel this out for that lip. Do it again. Go straight up, so that's where the lip is. I'm going to just freestyle this, go up just slightly, and then scale that inward. Then down. 
Uh, maybe a little bit more. There we go. And then we can create the inside. On to go like that. Make that a little bit smaller. So I can drag. All right. So you can see our thickness right here. So that's the thickness of our rim. You're looking at this space. So we're gonna progressively make this down. This is, we're making it hollow currently. And then I'm going to click and drag all the way down to where you think is good. Expand this. Now I'm just making sure our thickness is relatively the same from here and here. So you can see where this beveled too. So I'm actually going to backspace that. I'm going to add that geometry that we did before, roughly in the same spot. And then do it again. Expand that, just so we don't get that warping in geometry. That looks good. Again, looking at the thickness all the way down to about right there. Continue and make this smaller good enough. I'm also going to start from here. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. Push that on that end and lift it up. So, like, if you look at a bottle, there's almost a lip at the bottom as well. So, uh, it's just small imperfections that add to the uh, quote-unquote realism of that. So, let's look at it. Let's exit out. There it is. It looks, looks pretty nice, actually. Yeah, you have your bottom. A little bit straight. You can adjust that if you want, if you so choose. Our bottle is hollow. Let's uh, go look inside of it, and then zoom in. Yep, there's the hole. So we're inside the bottle currently. You look inside. All right. And uh, that's how you model the flask. You can also change this. I'm gonna go to the side profile I'm going to quick copy and paste this, move it over this way, Whoop. look into this one. The one on the right, right here, is the same thing, but I took, let's find it, I took the geometry that we did over here, right, and then... I just moved it all the way down. Like that. So I need both of those and I need nope. Nope. Just trying to guess that one and that yep, yeah, there we go. Uh, just like that. So I just move those down. And then I got that shape. Which was pretty damn cool. And uh, that's pretty much it. And you can use the same concept on making uh, beakers and test tubes and other items as such. And uh, here is a model of that. I'm going to look inside my camera and hit render. So if you watch my glass tutorial, you can uh, add the texture and lighting for the scene. So we can watch this real quick. I'll speed it up. And uh, look at these really cool reflections. I, I usually use a uh, an HDRI, which is an uh, inside material, but I used a outside, which has you know the sky and a ground, so you get both of that. And I thought it came out really nice. I have some lights up here too. And then there's the other flask. So if you want to stick around, I'm going to 
model and tech or not model but texture and light our scene that we just made that has these same exact uh sized images or models and uh i'll show you how to do that and i'm going to go relatively fast so here we are create a material color i'm going to add a greenish teal color uh, reflectance. I'm going to add a Beckman. Specular, transparency, fraction 1.52, a little bit non transparent. Bring the color in. Drop that one on that. Drop that one on that. Let's make a plane. Try to go as fast as possible. Make this a little bit larger. This is relatively what I did. I'll drop this down. And I would make sure this doesn't touch because real objects actually don't touch the floor. They're just, you know, they're just extremely close. And also that creates a drop shadow, which is nice. I'm going to add a bend tool. Just bend it so I know which way it's going. Okay. Move it, then hold, then hold shift. Move it, then hold shift. Oops. Make it a little bit bigger. Drop that under. Nope. Come on. We're going to add a camera into a uh, telephoto lens just because I like it. I'm going to create a luminous channel. Oh, let's, I'm just going to use this. I think it's a heat map. I don't see how it will ruin anything. Throw that down on the sky. I just created a luminous channel. That's going to act as soft boxes. I can make a soft box, but those work just as efficiently. And then I'm just going to add a gradient on this background. Good enough. I'm going to lazily do this one and render settings. Let's go to physical. Put some GI on this baby. Bam! See how this renders out. Totally experimental. As this renders, I'm gonna dip into the Snapple. My Snapple cap reads <clears throat> The King of Hearts is the only king without a mustache. Huh. The more you know. Oh, that came out pretty cool. And then, uh... 
it was your model. And uh, thank you, Mr. So, butcher his name one more time. Uh, Ridzwan Sakamat. I don't know. He also, if you go to his Facebook, ooh, he subscribes to me. But he also watched one of a flask, which is interesting since he asked. I wonder if it's in English or not. I don't really want to watch it. And a glass material. But he doesn't have any videos. Uh, that's interesting. So, uh, there's your uh, flask, and thank you for asking me to model one for you. So, uh, there you go. And uh, I'll see you on the next video. Again, thanks for watching.